thanks for dropping in. A little over a year ago, I launched the 3D printing channel with this project, the treasure chest puzzle box. And while that video is a bit stilted, I think the puzzle itself is pretty neat. In fact, I've printed nearly 300 of these chests since creating that puzzle. But no design is perfect, and nothing makes that more obvious than printing and hand assembling hundreds of copies. Before we start though, this video is going to spoil the secrets behind how this puzzle works. If you want to solve the puzzle for yourself, stop the video and direct a 3D printing friend here so they can print a copy for you. With that warning aside, let's get to the pitfalls of the original design. The first problem with the original design is it requires extra hardware. Each chest uses 12 magnets in two short lengths of metal rod. While these parts don't cost much, I'm aiming for a fully 3D printed solution. The next problem is that this puzzle takes too long to print. The design has 26 individual 3D printed parts. Even if your printer is large enough to print all the parts in one go, it would take more than 24 hours of constant printing to finish. You could try printing at a higher speed, but then we get to the next issue. Many of the parts are risky prints. These slats, for example, are printed vertically. Just a little wobble will cause the print to fail. And if you're printing multiple slats at the same time, one failed slat can easily take down the others. The fourth and final problem is more of an opportunity. I'd like to make the puzzle easier to customize and remix. The classic treasure chest is nice, but we can do better. Okay, the challenge has been set, and here's my response. These new puzzle boxes are fully 3D printed. They have far fewer parts. They can be printed in less than half the time. They're less risky to print. They have a range of swappable parts for greater customization, and they're designed for easier remixing. Most importantly, these improvements don't change the puzzle solution. Let's take a moment to solve one. This one. As you'd expect, the lid on the chest won't come off even though there's a clear gap suggesting otherwise. An observant solver will quickly find four parts that have some wiggle to them. Three slats on the top and a panel on the bottom. But a wiggle is all you're going to get until you rotate the puzzle into the right orientation. This first and topmost slat will only slide when the chest is held upside down. This reveals a small dot indicator, proving that the slat is now unlocked. The two side slats which only move after the first, will slide when facing straight up. With all three slats unlocked, the bottom panel will now open and slide right out. The puzzle is now solved. So how were those design goals achieved while maintaining the same functionality as the original? Well, the most difficult challenge was scrapping the hardware. After all, I didn't add magnets to the original just because I love magnets. The magnets were added to provide a nice snap when sliding slats between locked and unlocked positions. This new design achieves the same result through a springy arm that's built right into the slats. Two indents hidden below each track provide a click point for the springy arm to snap into. I'm actually a little shocked with how well this alternate solution works. The original design used a metal rod to hold a weighted axle floating in the center of the puzzle box. But it turns out you can achieve the same outcome by changing the shape of the axle itself. These pointy ends sit securely inside conical indents on either side of the chest, but they remain loose enough to rotate quite freely. The same trick worked for the flip lid at the bottom of the chest, removing any need for a metal rod there as well. With these few changes, the puzzle is now fully 3D printed. My next goal was to drastically reduce the number of parts. To achieve this, I reconsidered what was absolutely necessary and removed or merged the rest. This mechanism still needed three sliding slats, but the other eight served only as red herrings. So I reshaped the top of the chest to imitate separate slats without actually requiring individual parts. The slats on the side of the chest were removed entirely. With these and a few other merged pieces, the overall part count fell from 26 down to 10. The remaining parts are also much easier to print. The three slats are now printed on their side. The overhang that results from this new orientation is a very printable 55 degrees. The weighted axle has also been reworked, so it can be printed on its side. Because of these changes, the entire chest can be printed in 12 hours, even with fairly conservative print speeds. 
The last improvement was the most fun. I wanted a range of design styles which could be mixed and matched to create more unique combinations. The first style is, of course, just a plain chest. Nothing fancy here. But these more boring parts compare well with some of the busier styles. The next example is a mix of two options. The base is using the inset style, which has rectangular indents on each side of the chest, as well as the bottom door. The top of the chest is using the rib style, which adds a nice handle to the slats. The next example is also a mix. The base is using the slat style, a callback to the original chest design, and the top is using a very minimalistic line style on the slats. This is less of a handle and more of an extra indicator of the slat position. Now let's check out some fancier options. This is the diamond style. The diamond motif is reflected on every part of the chest, from the slats on top to the bottom door. This honeycomb style adds some random height variation to its hexagonal cells. Depending on the filament you're using, this may look like a very natural beehive or a very unnatural sci-fi artifact. And the last style is cube, an isometric pattern that may remind you of MC Escher or Cubert. I find this one really mesmerizing, as the pattern shifts depending on how you look at it. If you're interested in creating your own remix chest, you can start with a plain chest or a separate template chest I've included with the rest of the files. The template chest is just the bare geometry, no subtle chamfers or finger-friendly fillets. The sharp corners will provide easier surfaces to build off of. With fewer parts to put together, you'd expect the assembly to be much easier than the original. Unfortunately, you'd be right, but there's still a couple places where things might go wrong. So let's build another copy. The first step is to attach both the top and bottom frame to an end frame. Orientation is really important here, so I've added a small indicator mark on the inside of both the top and bottom frames. If the indicator lines match, the parts are positioned correctly relative to each other. If that looks good, glue the bottom frame into the end frame. The top frame, on the other hand, should be inserted without glue. That holds some sliding parts, and we don't want glue anywhere near that. While the glue is setting, let's switch to the weighted axle. You have two options here. The default axle is a faster print and uses less material. The heavy axle rotates more consistently. Either way, these parts should be printed with plenty of infill, at least 50%. This axle cap gets glued onto the end. The lip of the axle cap should rest just below the wheel on the weighted axle, like this. Next, let's test fit the slats and make sure they run smoothly in their tracks. If the slats don't fit, a little sanding on the side may help. Now it's time to add the axle assembly. This slides into the chest with the wheel facing the open end. Let's test fit the other frame. It can be tricky lining up the axle at this point, but if you go slowly, it will eventually fall into place. At this point, we can test the mechanism. Make sure that the axle rotates easily, and also that the latches can slide past the axle wheel at all the correct orientations. If all is well, glue the end cap on. Only apply glue to the bottom frame. We've gone too far to accidentally glue the sliding latches into place. Once the glue is set, add the bottom lid and lock the puzzle. There's one last upgrade to the design that I haven't mentioned. It's something that you can't even see. Unlike the original treasure chest, this redesign is available under a Creative Commons attribution license. That basically means that anyone is free to print, alter, distribute, or even sell copies. Just make sure to link back to the original design, as explained in the license itself. So have at it, and let me know if you've done something cool with it. But until then, happy printing, and thanks for stopping by.